You don't even know what you're talking about, bro. You really, you, 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 you really don't know what you're talking about. Okay, Mukhtar didn't know what he was talking about. He couldn't defend it. Let's see if this guy does. Let's see if this guy does. No, one second. One second. One second. Okay, you see? Can't answer. So let me ask. Let me ask any Muslim, any Muslim who can answer this question: Is it haram or halal? Okay. You guys are closer than the Muslims. Uh, are you a Muslim? <laughs> I believe in what was revealed to you. I believe in what was revealed to them. And that wasn't my question, because he says do that you, you can. Cannot... Do I believe in their particular understanding? So you're a Muslim? I would define myself as a Muslim. Do you think he's a Muslim? Yes. Okay, fair enough. We'll, we'll just. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. We'll, we'll see. So, so my question to you is: In Islam, is it is it haram or halal? to swear by any other than Allah. Well, I don't believe in what they believe in. I believe, ah. I believe in the gospel and okay. so right. I don't believe in so, so we're not talking to a Muslim here. No offense, bro. I'll happily talk to you another day about any topic you want to. But I, I want to find a Muslim to answer my question because it wouldn't be fair to let a non-Muslim answer that question. So can any of you guys, can any of you guys, could you answer my question? Oh, no, no. He, this guy's already shown that he's a coward. This guy's already shown that he's a coward. Sir, could you answer my question? Is it permitted, is it haram or halal to swear by any other than Allah? You don't know? So would you do it? I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't you know. don't know. Fair enough. If you don't know, you don't know. Please, give me a favor. Okay. Bring, him. Bring him. Can you go down? Bring him. Shamsi is in here. Bring him. I think he's in, in police him. custody at the moment. No, I saw him. I think he's in police custody. No, oh, he got released then. Yeah, maybe. So maybe these guys could answer. Gentlemen, gentlemen, is it haram or halal to, to swear by any other than Allah? Would you do it? Would you do it? Would you do it? You see, ladies and gentlemen, they're all noise. I'm, well, I'm asking, I want to ask you a question. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let me explain what I want to talk about. I'll come over here and explain what I want to talk about. Did he just say I was, who said I was running away? Who said I was running away? Who said I was running away? Cowards. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let me explain to you what I'm talking about. Explain it. So, this book, yeah. right, Muslims come to this corner every week, week in, week out, attacking Christianity, no, 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 attacking no, the no, Bible, no, 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 attacking our beliefs, no, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. But, ladies and gentlemen, this book claims that if it were from any other than Allah, it would be free from contradiction, right? I should not find a contradiction in this book, ladies and gentlemen. And I am unable anywhere to find any passage of the Quran that says that it is haram not to swear by any other than Allah, but I do find it in the Hadiths. So let me give you some examples. In Sahih al-Muslim, book 15, number 4035, it says this. Umar b. al-Khattab reported Allah's messenger as saying, Allah the great and majestic forbids you to swear by your fathers. Umar said, by Allah, I have never sworn by my father since I heard Allah's messenger forbidding it, mentioning them on my behalf nor on the behalf of someone else. In book 15 of Sahih al-Muslim, number 4036, it says, This hadith has been transmitted on the authority of Zuri, except that in the hadith narrated on the authority of Ukkel, the words are, I did not take oath by anyone except Allah, since I heard Allah's messenger forbidding it, nor did I speak in such terms, and the narrator did not say on my behalf or on the behalf of someone else. I'll give two more examples. All right. 
in book four, in book 15, number 40, 37, the hadith reads, Salim reported on the authority of his father, that Allah the apostle heard Umar while he was taking an oath by his father and the rest of the hadith is the same, i.e. the other hadith I've just quoted. And finally, as my final example from the hadiths, book 15, number 40, 38, Abdullah reported that Allah's messenger found Umar b al Khattab amongst the riders and he was taking an oath by his father's father. Allah's messenger called them, our Allah, the exalted and majestic, has forbidden you that you take oaths by your father. He who begged to take an oath must take it by Allah or keep quiet. Right. Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking now, sir. If you wanted to debate, you had your chance earlier. Ladies, well, listen to the talk then, don't interrupt. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. I'm getting a quote from Islam QA. So this is an Islamic website where a Muslim scholar is giving a fatwa, a fiqh, a legal opinion. If you want to debate it, brother, come and debate it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, then you need to listen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Muslim scholar speaking. It is haram to swear by anything other than Allah, whether that be one's father or leader or on one's honor or status, because it is proven by the fact that the prophet said, whoever swears an oath, then let him swear by Allah or else keep silent, agreed upon. And he said, whoever swears an oath, let him swear it, but let him not swear it by anything other than Allah, as narrated by Al Nasai. Now notice the guy who earlier was said I was lying is now saying I'm telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. So we have established, ladies and gentlemen, we have established, ladies and gentlemen, from Islamic sources that you should not swear by any other than Allah. Right. Why? Why? Because it is shirk. shirk. It is minor haram. shirk. It's haram. Yes. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So let me ask the Muslims this question. Let me ask the Muslims this question. Would Allah commit shirk? Would Allah do something that is haram? No, he never. What's your answer? Would Allah, would Allah do something that is shirk or haram? Okay, so he didn't want to answer the question. Let me now show you the contradiction. Remember, according to Sharia law, you cannot swear by anything other than Allah because it's shirk, because it's haram, ladies and gentlemen. So let's listen, let's listen to Allah's words. He's from Saudi Arabia. That's where I got this book. Yes. Yes. I'm leaving you. Yes. Bye bye. I'm leaving you. Bye bye. No, 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 Right, ladies and gentlemen. Don't interrupt him, bro, because he needs to listen to the contradiction. He was, he was so determined that he wanted to hear the contradiction. So let him hear it. Right? So we've established, ladies and gentlemen, according to Islamic sources, that you can't swear by anything other than Allah because it is shirk and because it's haram. So now listen to the words of Allah. This is Allah. Allah speaking. Yes. Right. I'm coming. Bear with us. Yes, we'll come to it. Bear with us. Right. Bear with us. So in Surah 
in Sura 36. 36. 36, yeah, get out your Qurans, them that are doubting me. I only have a Saudi Arabian Quran. Surah 36, verses, verses 2 to 4. Yes, Surah 36. What will we read on? This is, Allah is saying, by the Quran full of wisdom, thou art indeed one messenger on a straight path. It is a revelation sent down by him, the exalted in might and merciful. Allah is saying, by the Quran. He is swearing by the Quran. Let me give you another example. In Surah 38, 1 and 2, we read, Surah 38, you can come and debate me in a second. Surah 38, 1 and 2. Yes, says again, by the Quran full of admission, but the unbelievers in self-glory and separatism, Allah is swearing by the Quran. Let's give another example. Surah 43, 2 to 3. Let's go there. Let's go there. Surah, go, Surah 43. Keep up. Because he's mocking, but he won't come and debate in a second. He won't come and debate in a second. In Surah 43, 2 and 3. By the book that makes things clear, we have made it a Quran in Arabic, that ye may be able to understand. Again, Allah is swearing by the book, ladies and gentlemen. In Surah 86, 1 to 4. Let's go there. So basically, Allah is committing shirk. Surah 86, 1 to 4. Listen to Allah's words. Ah, okay, okay. By the sky By the and the night visitant. And what will explain to thee what the night visitant is? The star of piercing brightness. There is no soul but has a protector over it. So Allah is now swearing <laughs> by the sky, ah, ladies and gentlemen. Sky, Let's go on. In Surah 53, in Surah 53, yeah, yeah. 1 to 4. Let's go there, ladies and gentlemen. This gentleman needs to listen. In Surah 53, 1 to 4. Surah 53, 1 to 4. Listen to Allah. By the star, when it goes down, your companion is neither astray nor being misled, nor does he say of his desire, it is no less than inspiration sent down to him. So Allah is swearing by the star, by the sky, by the Quran, and by the life of Muhammad, ladies and gentlemen. That, ladies and gentlemen, is shirk. It is shirk, ladies and gentlemen, because the hadiths forbid and make haram swearing by any other than the name of Allah. What have you got to say to that? Come here. Come here. Come and debate. I'll come to you. The Quran, uh, the Hadith is saying we shouldn't swear on anything, right. right? Only Allah. So how did the Quran, what you just read now, yes. is he talk, was the Hadith talking about Allah or was he talking about us? It's talking about you. Thank you. So but how why? is the Quran, who's doing why? swearing? Tell, tell, tell me why. Why is don't it? No, 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 don't, no, 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 no. We're going to have a question for a question and I'm going to answer no, your question. I answered your question, now answer mine. My question to you is this my question Why to you is this question question? Word, because that's how a conversation goes no, friend welcome to dialogue now now and no i answered your question you just weren't listening you didn't listen pay attention next time pay attention next time pay attention next time so here's my question to you 
Here's my question to you. Here's my question to you. Would Allah commit shirk? Brother. Would Allah commit shirk? Brother. Brother. Answer that Brother. question. Just because you have a cameras here doesn't no. mean that you can I, just I, say I will answer. you want. I will answer. I, I, you, are you a Muslim? Yeah. Okay, no, go on. I will say no. Show, right, so Allah would not before, commit before, shirk. Before that we continue, you have to answer at this. Yeah, we'll you do question for question. Okay. Okay. You, have done you didn't I, listen, I bro. Okay. Your problem is, you asked the question. You know you what your problem is. You know you know what your problem is. Right, you know what your problem is. You see, you're not doing it again, you're doing it again. You're just interrupting no, continuously. Talking, you're just all go you in and you're interrupting continuously. You asked a question and then I answered your question and you didn't listen and then I invited you. You should have listened the first time. You should have listened the first time. And in a dialogue, in a dialogue, you're just whinging now. You're just whinging now. You're just complaining now. Everyone heard me answer the question. You should have paid attention. Let's do, let's do question for, you see, you're still interrupting continuously. Is that, like, like, you're just whinging, you're whinging. So let, let's be clear, let's be clear. I'm gonna restate my position and then I'm gonna engage in discussion with anyone that wants to discuss. That includes you and it includes this whinger as well. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go, bye bye, bye bye. So ladies and gentlemen, the reason, ladies and gentlemen, that Muslims can't swear by anything other than Allah is because it is minor shirk. No. That no, is no, the no, teachings no, 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 of Islam. Don't say this. Right, this ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to show him from a Muslim also, scholar. If you can't listen, of, no, we won't have a discussion. We won't have a discussion if you can't listen. Okay, but you so if you can't wrong. hear what I have to say, you won't you be able to respond to it. Incorrect. Now, I ladies and gentlemen, you. now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, okay. he can correct me, Why? but does that stop him from being polite? Could he not wait to let me finish okay. before he offers okay. the correction? Finish. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, like it. this brother needs to learn finish. some manners. Oh. Finish. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We all agree I should be able to finish, so yeah. I will. But they're still interrupting and they're still interrupting. Just, they're just, they're still interrupting. And the more they interrupt, the longer this goes on, ladies and gentlemen. So in Islam, it is shirk to swear by any other than Allah. That is shirk. Shirk is one of the worst sins in Islam. But Allah commits shirk because Allah swears by the star. He swears by the dawn. He swears by the Quran. He swears by the life of Muhammad. And that is shirk. And that is a contradiction. Now you can reply. Now wait, notice I'm not going to interrupt you. But then when I reply, I don't interrupt me. I, I oh, yes, you did. Carry on. Okay. Some of things that you told, yep. that's incorrect. Before that I start to correct you, I would, answer, I would answer with one question. Do you know the difference between the creation and the creator? Do you want me to answer that and reply? So ladies and gentlemen, I've been invited to reply. I've been invited to answer the question, do I understand the difference between the Creator and... No, he's interrupting again. He invited me to reply and now he's interrupting. He actually asked me to reply to his question and he's interrupting, ladies and gentlemen. So the difference, ladies and gentlemen, is this. I don't care about it. He doesn't care about good manners. What? He doesn't the care about honest dialogue, ladies and gentlemen. This because not he's not listening, I'm going to no, talk no, no, to everyone no. else. Don't, don't the change. difference between creator and creation okay, is this, good. ladies and now gentlemen. The creator creates the creation. But now I'm going to ask him a question. What's this? What's, I'm going to ask answer? him a question. What's the answer? The question I ask him is this. Would Allah commit shirk? No, okay, no, I asked, no, no, okay. no, great. Now it's his turn to ask a question. <laughs> no, you didn't ask me. Well, ask another question you know. then. No, what's the difference between okay. the creation and the creation? Do you have a comment if you don't have a question? The creation. What's that? Go on. No, go with the mean, meaning of So, that. ladies and gentlemen, this, this brother asks a question. This means, this is and it is this. The question is, does, does, the hadith, are they directed to the creator or to the creation? 
They are directed to the creation. However, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this brother said Allah would not commit shirk. Yes, sure. So here we have a command to the creation not to commit the sin of shirk and an admission that Allah would not commit shirk. So how do Muslims understand that Allah swears by the stars and the dawn and the Quran and the life of Muhammad. Okay. How is that not shirk? Okay. okay. I, 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 no, you interrupted. God. So, uh, the hadith was directed to the creation. And then you said, the hadith, he, he, it's, not, it's not a matter the of the hadith. You are interrupting. Ignore him, brother. No, 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 don't fit down, brother. Don't fit down so what the, he's, the, the he's doing. I, I, so, I, I, okay. The hadith yeah, was yeah. directed to the creation. And then you said, this hadith contradicts the, uh, the verses in the Quran. In the Quran, who's making these, uh, who's, who's saying the, the verse? It's the creator. But you're saying that, you're comparing the hadith and the Quran, you're saying this, you know what I mean? You're saying it's contradicting, but it's not aimed at the creator. That hadith is for the creation. Okay, so, the creator cannot I understand your argument. So what you I understand your argument. But for me, Right? This, this, this proposition that you are making, this distinction that you're making, doesn't excuse Allah from committing minor shirk. No, hold on. Did I interrupt you? Oh, no, no. Wait, did I interrupt you? Right? I can talk to you or I can shout to the crowd. You make a choice. So, ladies, so what I'm saying to you, bro, is you agree with me that if I swear by someone other than Allah, I am committing shirk. But then when Allah swears by someone other than Allah, he's not committing shirk, right? So they go by different rules, right? So that means that, that we now see a real difference, a real qualitative difference between the God of Muhammad and the God of Jesus Christ. Because the God of Muhammad, something that he commands makes it haram or halal, he doesn't command that which is evil or good so in other words the god of islam is a fickle god okay do you know what a fickle god is yes, but can you give me one moment? yeah go on reply all of that we can go there but there was no contradiction in the quran yes there was you just went somewhere else with it i'm telling you there's no contradiction because you said the contradiction is the hadith and the quran and then i said to you the hadith is for the creation and the quran it was the creator that said it okay so show me so show me in the quran so show me in the quran where it teaches that Allah can do what is evil. I'm talking about is shirk evil? Is shirk evil? Is shirk evil? The creator and the creation. Now answer that question. Is shirk evil? For for creation, yes. Right. For creation. Did you all hear that admission? Shirk is evil for creation. One second. So is shirk evil? One second. One second. Is shirk evil? of itself or just because Allah declares it evil? Everything that we see as evil is declared by Allah. We take out everything from Allah. And, and but is it evil? Does Allah say that it's evil because it is? Or does Allah just decide that it's evil? That question doesn't... That question I, makes a lot of sense. Why does it make sense to me? I get mine from... I get not, my... my um, my directions from Allah. What Allah do, okay, let me ask you this question. Shirk. If a man... And you're, you're telling me some philosophy. Let me, let me ask you this why question. Why is, uh, is it shirk evil? What's your name, bro? Is, or if it's not, when it's Muhammad. Right, Muhammad. Bob, let's try and have a nice conversation, right? I, I just want to so, learn. So I'm let me... Let, 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 well, learn, you'll learn more sense. if you interrupt I less. I, I don't like when you say there's a You'll learn more... Well, there is. No there is a contradiction. You'll learn more if you interrupt less. Since you're here to learn, that means you have to listen, right? Unless you're disingenuous and only you're speaking, you wrong, and only if you're speaking disingenuously. Now, my point to you is this. You're saying that Allah forbids shirk, right? Yeah. I want to ask you, what do you call someone who says, don't do X because X is bad, but then you see him do X. What do you call that person? A hypocrite. A hypocrite. Is Allah a hypocrite? Yes. It's basically saying, don't Allah tell us not to judge people, but Allah judges people. So you're saying he's a hypocrite for judging when he's telling us not to judge. Right. This doesn't make sense. One second, one second, one second. Go on. Firstly, my God does not command us not to judge. He commands us to judge in love, which is exactly what he does. What? And we're, we're beginning to see the difference between Christianity and Islam is that the God of the Christians, firstly, forbids what is evil because it is evil. 
And he commands what is good because it is good. And he commands what is good because it reflects his nature. And he forbids what is evil because it goes against his divine nature. But what we're seeing, but what we're seeing, what we're seeing in Islam, what we're seeing in Islam is a hypocritical, fickle God who simply commands something as evil when it's not evil in itself and then does the evil that he forbids others to do. Do you get that? Did you follow my argument, Mohammed? You weren't even listening, were you? You weren't even listening. You weren't even listening. You weren't even listening. You weren't even listening. Right, exactly. You're not here to learn. 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 So, so let me uh, let me ask you this question. Well, you know you did. How can how can you say I'm wrong? Now notice he's run away from the debate, ladies and gentlemen. He's run away from the debate, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be clear. Can you find me a verse in the Bible? In in the in the epistles where God says that be, Paul says that because God is so holy, he swears only by himself. Right? I want you to find me that passage in scripture. Bear with us. Now notice Muhammad who wanted to learn ran away. He was disingenuous and insincere the whole time. Thank you. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. I'll come to you. Let's be clear. The God of Islam doesn't command and forbid what is evil because it actually is evil. He just declares it evil for no reason at all. And because he declares it is evil, it is evil. That is fickle. That's what a fickle person does. But then he forbids Muslims to do what he himself does. That ladies and gentlemen, is a hypocrite. But by contrast, the God of the Bible forbids what is evil because it is actually evil. And it is actually evil, ladies and gentlemen, because it goes against his divine nature. And the God of the Christians commands what is good because it is actually good and because if you do it, it goes along with his divine nature. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just point out something from the Bible. Does it say God swears by his own name? It's in Hebrews, I think. Hebrews 6.13, ladies and gentlemen. How did I beat both of you? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what it says in Hebrews 16.13. I'll, I'll come and debate you in a second. I'll come and debate you in a second. In Hebrews 13, 16, sorry, 6, 13, it says this. For, one, for when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is an insult to the honor of God for God to swear by anything else. When we make oaths, ladies and gentlemen, we make oaths by things that are sacred. We say things like, I swear by my mother's grave, or I swear by the temple, or I swear by God, or I swear on my mother's life, or I swear upon the Bible. We say these things because these things are important to us. We value them more than ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. But who can God value more than himself? Who is greater than God that he should swear by it? No one. 
And so God can only swear by his own name. He can only swear by himself. And the God of the Bible only swears by himself because nothing is more valuable than himself. And so he cannot swear by anything else. But think about the dishonor that the Quran reaps upon Allah by saying that Allah swears by the life of Muhammad, that Allah swears by the Quran, that Allah swears by the star, that Allah swears by the dawn. Allah is taking an oath by the things that he has created. How can he do such a thing? Such a promise is worth nothing. If I said that I swear by the shit of a rat, <laughs> would you believe such an oath? Oh. If I said to you yeah. that I swear by the life of a gnat or of a flea, <laughs> would you believe such a promise? No way. And how much is the star to Allah? It is as a flea to me or the rat shit to me. <laughs> So Allah is swearing by things beneath him and his promises are empty. So his promises are empty. He insults himself by swearing to things lesser than him. He commits lesser shirk. He is a hypocrite for telling you to not commit lesser shirk whilst he does it. And he is fickle because he commands things as forbidden even though they're not actually evil. By contrast, the glory of Yahweh is that he only swears by himself for all of creation is beneath him. He commands us to do evil, to, to forbid evil because it is evil and to do good because it is good. And these things reflect his nature and he himself does that which he commands ladies and gentlemen and in that ladies and gentlemen yeah. you see a stark difference between the god of islam and the god of the prophets from abraham through to jesus christ we as christians believe in oath taking as christians our lives should be sealed in by the oaths that we make priests take vows Couples getting married, take vows. But I want to say to you, if you're a Christian plumber, you should take vows in your business life. Vows never to cheat a customer. Vows always to be honest in your taxes. Vows always to do a proper job to the best of your ability. As an evangelist, I also have vows. Let me read to you my vows. These are my vows as an evangelist. And I say them before you all right now. <laughs> so these are my vows as an evangelist. And if you are an evangelist, I want to encourage you to take vows as well. This is my public declaration of vows as an evangelist to seek out the lost in season and out of season with all the resources at my disposal until such pursuit is no longer possible to pursue my own discipleship in the Lord with all my heart mind soul and strength in pursuit of all of my own vocation and sanctification and to fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin the world and the devil in the defense of the faith and the faithful in thought, word, and deed. As Christians, the way of the Christian is that you use vows once you have found your vocation to pin your vocation in. But Christ said, swear by nothing in heaven, in heaven or on earth, because the heaven is God's footstool. Sorry, the heaven is God's throne and the earth is God's footstool. And so when we make vows, ladies and gentlemen, we declare our commitments as something that we simply mean to do. Our yes means yes, and our no means no. We don't swear on anything else. 
because to swear on anything else is to say that we are not true to our word, ladies and gentlemen. And nothing is worthy of being swore upon but God alone. And that is the way of the Christian. Muslims commit polytheism and their Quran has shirk. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Going once. How are we doing? Peace be with you, bro. Any questions? Ladies and gentlemen. When are oaths not acceptable? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So the question is, as a Christian, when is an oath not acceptable? The answer to that question is if you make, if you make a commitment to sin. If you say you're going to do something, and then you learn that the thing that you're going to do is a sin, you don't have to keep your word. Because in the Christian faith, that which you swear must only be oaths towards the good. If it's not towards the good, you don't need and can't make a promise to do it.